Hello everybody, I am Mika Seppälä. In this video, I will discuss limits. Limits are a central concept in calculus. We may talk about limits of functions, limits of sequences or limits of series. In this example, I will discuss limits of series and uh, more specifically, I will discuss an example of a geometric series. The infinite sum 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 16 plus and so forth is an example of a geometric series. It is geometric because the ratio of the two subsequent terms is in this case always one half. This series is also abbreviated as saying summation k from 1 to the infinity, 1 over 2 to the power k, and the summation is denoted by this capital sigma symbol. So the question is, how can we evaluate such a sum? How can we associate a number to this sum? We do that by a limiting process. So we do that by interpreting this sum 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 16 plus and so forth as an area. When we do that, then it becomes completely obvious what the value of this sum is. Our task is to evaluate the infinite sum 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus and so forth. We cannot do that by performing the additions because there are infinitely many additions to be done. And during our lifetime, we can perform only finitely many computations. So we must figure out something else. And we will evaluate this infinite sum by interpreting this as a limit of the area of certain domains that grow. To explain this argument, we start with a square whose side length is 1 meters. We cut that square into two rectangles by a horizontal line going through the center of the square. We color the lower rectangle blue and observe that it has the area 1 half. We are left with the white upper rectangle and we cut that into two squares by a vertical line going through the center of the white rectangle. We get two squares and the leftmost of these two squares will be colored blue. It has the area one fourth. And now the blue domain has the total area one half plus one fourth. We are left with a white square and this white square will be cut into two rectangles by a horizontal line going through the center of this square and the lower one of these two rectangles will be colored blue. And now we have a blue domain with the area of one half plus one fourth plus one eighth. We continue this process. A moment ago we were left with a rectangle. We cut that into two squares by a vertical line going through the center of the rectangle. We color the leftmost of these two squares blue and observe that it now has the area 1 over 16 and the blue domain has the total area 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 16. We continue this process. Whenever we are left with a square, we cut that into two halves by a horizontal line going through the center of the square and when we are left with a rectangle, we cut that into two halves by a vertical line going through the center of this rectangle. And we will color parts of these squares and rectangles blue following the pattern just introduced. From this, it is obvious that any finite part of the infinite sum 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus and so forth can be interpreted as the area of uh, a blue domain formed as a union of rectangles and squares as shown in this figure. From the interpretation of the terms of the infinite sum 
as areas of squares and rectangles contained in this one by one square. It follows that each finite part of the sum, which is of the form one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus and so forth, up to the term one over two to the power n for some positive integer n, that each such finite part is the area of a blue domain contained in the one by one square. The one by one square has the area one. Therefore, the area of any of these blue domains is going to be strictly less than one, and therefore we conclude that one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus and so forth plus one over two to the power n is less than one for all positive integers n. But as n grows, the blue domain also grows and eventually covers the whole square. This means that the infinite sum, one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus and so forth, corresponds to the area of the whole square. Therefore, this infinite sum has the value one. This figure illustrates this fact. The blue domains shown in this picture correspond to a finite part of this infinite sum and the red square on the upper right hand corner of this one by one square, the red dot corresponds to an infinite part of this infinite sum. And uh, the total value of this infinite sum, one half plus one fourth plus one eighth uh, plus so forth is the area of this rectangle and it is therefore one. As an example of the use of this result, consider the problem, solve the equation square root of x minus one times 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 and so forth equals two. Now to solve this equation, we must interpret the left hand side as a limit. We observe that square root of x minus one times square root of x minus one and that uh, times square root of x minus one and so forth is simply x to minus one to the power one half times x minus one to the power one fourth and so forth. And this means that the left hand side of the original equation, which seems somewhat complicated, the square root of x minus one times square root of x minus one times square root of x minus one and so forth is simply x minus one to the power one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus and so forth. But we just computed that one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus and so forth evaluates to one. So the left hand side of this equation is simply x minus one to the power one. Hence the equation square root of x minus one times 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 and so forth equals two simplifies to the equation x minus one equals two. And the answer is x equals three. Want to learn more? Visit www.webalt.com.